we had the one this program before. It's one of the things when you when you get to know them, you can't can't remember. But thankfully, the people at the CSO, the Central Statistical Office, uh, they are remembering because they need to remember because they're collating data. They are engaged in a number of community outreach activities which involve the CSO officers visiting your homes. However, there are some persons apparently intent on impersonating officers that has resulted in some chaos. Is that true? Is that perceived? Is that some social media fantasy yet again? Well, we're joined now by two officers who are going to give us some tips uh, as well as information about the CSO's public exercise. We have with us Sean O'Brien. Uh, he's here in his capacity as the director of statistics, so I expect him to read off immediately uh, Brian Lara's test batting average, his uh, one-day international average, and his T20 average as well, apart from his, uh, along with his strike rate, seeing that he's the director of statistics. Louis Gomez is a senior field interviewer. Good morning, gentlemen. Good to have you with us uh, this morning. And why are we here to talk about uh, the, the continuous program, uh, the continuous sample survey of population that is an ongoing exercise, and just to let people understand what that is about. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, would you care to respond to this concern that is being expressed, that there are people out there in the field presenting themselves falsely as members of the CSO to get data from in private individuals? Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Um, this has been... Uh, a rumor, I will describe it as, that has found itself on social media and even in some mainstream media outlets as well. And uh, we at the CSO have found no evidence of this. The CSSP, the Continuous Sample Survey of Population, is quite an important exercise because it supplies basic socio and demographic information about the population of Trinidad and Tobago in the intercensal years. As you know, the CSO does a census every 10 years, yeah. but in between those years, the CSSP fills the gap, and the data that emanates from the CSSP, uh, it, comes, it gives us the labor force bulletin every quarter, and the labor force report every, every year. And these are quite important uh, economic statistics for the surveillance of the economy. So to the extent that uh, persons believe these rumors, refuse to speak to our enumerators, uh, they're actually doing a disservice to Trinidad and Tobago because um, the, uh, the national planners, they depend heavily on the data that comes from the CSSP. Well, it's a whole different discussion as to whether or not our planners actually act on the data that is provided. But that is not your, your job. Your job is to provide the data first and foremost. But before I bring Mr. Mr. Gomez into the discussion again, this Mr. Joe, on what has been experienced out there in the field? Did anybody sit sick the bad dog behind him because they consider him to be uh, somebody bogus or something like that? But what should I do as a citizen? Somebody comes to my gate, to the door, ring the bell or whatever, and say they are here on behalf of the, the Central Statistical Office to gather data for the CSSP. What should I be asking of them to confirm their identity? Okay, okay that's an excellent question. I can tell that you went to St. Mary's College. Uh, yeah, as yeah, I, I, um, well done. What we should do, uh, you can, from your, the safety of your of indoors, ask the person their name. And then you can call us at the CSO, Mr. Gomez will give you the number, and say the name that the person would have, would have given, and we can verify. Further to that, we have IDs. The persons in the field uh, all have their IDs that authorize them to act on behalf of the Central Statistical Office. Uh, these IDs are quite distinguishable. It's not so easy to fake them, and uh, you have a look at it. It's just like any other um, organization that comes to your home. They, have, they should have official IDs, and, but the main thing I want people to know is that it's very important to answer these data. These data are being examined not just by local stakeholders, but I by our the international IS development no, the and when they and don't have like. the data because the population would have refused to answer, 
the, the consequences for Trinidad and Tobago are, are not so nice. And we just had a look at uh, a sampling of uh, the, the, the ID, and in this case, Mr. Gomez, who's, who's here with us, uh, statistical survey officer, and he's the head of section. By the way, that number uh, that you, you might want to call, 624-7311. That's 624-7311. Mr. Gomez, what has been your experience working in the field as far as the response of the general public to the, the, to the request for survey information? Usually we have a fair response. But lately, due to crime, many people are suspicious of anybody coming out their home. So we have people who tend to feel we are from, we are looking at their property, maybe we're coming back to kidnap, to see what they have to steal. Some take us up property tax officers. They don't want to give information. And it's getting more and more difficult for enumerators. We have to fight up with the crime out there in areas. We go to all areas, all the time. Even to the hotspot areas? Hotspot areas, yes. where there is crime. Sometimes there is a murder. Um, Sometimes our officers are shot gun. Don't get out of the area. Yeah. But they have to leave immediately. And <clears throat> we are constantly getting barriers. People are afraid to come to speak to us. They will stay from their home, peep, open their windows, but don't. Why? Get... Why do you see? Why would you reinforce uh, what uh, Mr. Brian is saying as far as the importance of this data? Because many people feel that the CSO says no, this data is purely for statistical purposes and so on. But there's always the suspicion. This is going to be used and passed on to another agency and another agency, or passed on to your friend who might be a gang, a gang leader to come and target you afterwards and so so. So you just collecting the data, but you're going to pass it on to. We are. We, we swear to what we do, and we each office out there has sworn a oath of secrecy. We cannot divulge anybody's information. People it's, sweat a lot of things. Yeah, but you know, people lie left, right, and center <laughs> a lot of the time. Not people, saying that you are, but yeah. I'm saying that it's always it's easy for a lot of people to put up the right hand and swear an oath. Yeah, it's another thing when it comes to preserving the sanctity of that data. Yeah, but we do, and I don't think at any time you can say CSO has divulged information for anyone. We don't collect information, even though we ask individual questions. We don't publish. We don't give any information on private persons. The CSO cannot publish information on even one or two people. They have to be a certain amount. And Mr. Brian, we can bring it back into the discourse because many people often query, what is the point of this data anyway? You said that, you know, you said this is very important information for developmental purposes, for, for various state agencies to function. Is this data presented in a timely manner? Because that has been a concern uh, by the, this political directorate, where they've actually questioned the validity of the data that comes out of the CSO. Mm. Okay, well, the aim of any national statistical office uh, is to present data on a timely basis. It should be timely, relevant, and accuracy. But to get data that exhibits such characteristics, you need the cooperation of the respondents. So what we're speaking about today directly impacts on, on, on your question. Should the population uh, refuse to give data, it, it impacts on our ability to, to gather the data, process these data in accordance with international statistical standards, and ultimately disseminate the data. So at one point when the CSO didn't have a building, we were like uh, almost two years behind. Today, we have data up to second quarter 2007, and third quarter is about to be uh, released. Yeah. So we have, in, we have improved tremendously, and that has not gone unnoticed by the IMF. The IMF in their Article 4 report uh, of 2017 noted the tremendous improvements at the CSO. We are not there yet, but we are, we are getting there but we need the cooperation of the public when we do our CSSP. We need the cooperation of firms when we do the CSSE, that's the Continuous Sample Survey of Establishment. Yes. We, we need the cooperation of all the respondents well, uh, to, to, to help us out in terms of getting the data 
to exhibit the characteristics. And just explain for people who will say, well, all of this data that we, we collect in, I don't see any benefits to me as a citizen. How does that benefit me? What, what would you say to those people? Oh, the, benefit, the benefits are tremendous because, um, firstly, the data are examined by, as I mentioned earlier, by international development partners. We have the, the IMF, we have the IDB, we have Moody's, Standards and Poor. And, what, and to the extent that they see the data showing um, a level of economic surveillance, um, they, they give the country certain ratings. So Trinidad and Tobago has benefited tremendously from uh, relatively lower cost to borrowing. We have also benefited from an uh, endless foreign direct investment. For this to continue, the data that, that are collected must be seen to be done under good governance practices and in accordance with international statistical standards. And it must be seen to be uh, relevant, timely, and accurate. Once the international development partners see that the data are being corrected from a genuine perspective, then it's marks for, it, to put it simply, it's marks for the country. So, and, and as you know, foreign direct investment and lower borrowing costs are drivers of the sustainable obvious. development. And just, just so we can understand, you, you mentioned that the, 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 the data for the third quarter of 2007 is almost 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. And we are happy to do that. We, uh, we put all our efforts, our energy out there. I want to compliment the field staff, especially for going out there, constantly being rebuffed by citizens, being challenged. Sometimes they call us fake. Again, because of ignorance, they don't, they don't realize we come all the time. We are constantly. And let's, not, and let's just not pretend that it's in the so called lower income areas and eh? no, no. some of the posh areas they worse. We get as much problems in the posh areas. We have gates we can't go through, they don't come out because they are afraid. People our interviewers are in the sun or rain and they won't come. You know the wee man so it doesn't take long to answer us. We yeah don't this is want, a yes or no. Yeah, so it wouldn't, even be, answer. Yeah. It wouldn't even be the courtesy of a response. And even in people who use the information from the CS so so much they are sometimes the one don't want to give information. Mm -hmm. Even the higher yeah. But it is one of the strengths. Yeah. What, what I could also, yes, also mention is that the CSSP has been in existence since 1962. Right before I was born, probably Mr. Gomez and yourself may have been around, but I, I <laughs> since, <don't> so old, <laughs> since then, I the CSSP. I thought you were thinking of the St. Mary's homies, <laughs> the, CSSP, the CSSP has been around since then, and we have maintained the confidence of our respondents. We have um, always uh, kept the data under the requisite uh, security um, protocols, cons, protocols yes. and there, there's never been a problem from since then to now. And I can give the assurance that your data will be confidential. It will be used only for statistical means. So we feel since we don't you know so many people live in this area or so many people uh, have this um, job or, or whatever. It's not going to be you're not going to be personally identified. We can give you that assurance. All right, gentlemen, well, thank you very much for being with us uh, this morning to, to give us this reassurance that all of these rumors flying about about people pretending to be CSO officers uh, that, and they are saying that they have no evidence of that. And, and I'm sure um, you, can, um, you, can, you can rest assured, people on social media will be saying that I have this evidence of this one and that one. Uh, we can give you the number once again, uh, Mr. Gomez, if you don't mind. Seven, uh, seven, just two, take a look four. at uh, that number just to remind everyone because even though I'm as, as old as I'm being told I am, uh, born in uh, 1965 actually, uh, the, the number to call, 624-7311. And, and as you heard Mr. O'Brien said, somebody comes at the door, knocking and out, ringing the bell, and you're not sure, call the number to verify the identity of the person, and that could be a big step forward in your own confidence in the process. And, and indeed, because we are not really a data-driven society, 
we really need to move towards that end and, and, and actually use the data that these individuals are collecting and have been collecting for decades on our behalf. Coming up towards 7.19 in Trinidad and Tobago, we'll be back right after this break. <laughs>